if you could learn how to pray from someone from the other side, especially a soul in purgatory, why on earth would you learn how to pray from a priest or a nun or anyone here on earth? Why would you listen to them? They don't know if how they're praying is taking you to heaven or not, whereas someone who's already there is already there. We will continue our journey exploring an unpublished manuscript on purgatory. I have compiled several quotes, about 20 of them, that talk around the theme of prayer. I beg you to please support this channel through Buy Me A Coffee. Now I'm not going to waste your time. Let's get into this right now. I'm going to start with one of the most broad quotes that kind of covers some of the main themes that she talks about. Then we're going to go chronologically through the book and I will be naming the pages as we go. Let's get into it right now. This is on page 14. Sister Mary Gabriel, the soul in purgatory. These are all quoting what she says. No, I do not see God when he is exposed. Yet I am conscious of his presence like you are with the eyes of faith. Our faith, however, is very different from yours. We know what God is. Always walk in the presence of God. Tell him everything. Talk to him as you would talk to a friend. Guard your interior life carefully. In order to prepare well for Holy Communion, you must love God, not only before and after receiving Him, but always and at all times. God desires you to think only of Him. Mortify your mind, your eyes, your tongue. That will be far more agreeable to God than corporal penances. These all too often proceed from one's own will. You must treat God as your Father, as a dear friend, as a beloved spouse, you must pour out all the tenderness of your heart on Jesus alone and on him wholly and entirely. During all eternity, you will sing of his infinite mercy in your regard. You must love Jesus so much that he may be able to find in your heart an agreeable resting place where he may be able, as it were, to console himself for the many offenses he receives everywhere. You must love him for indifferent and cowardly souls, but above all for yourself. In one word, you must love him so much that you will be a shining example. One of the things that is so striking about the way in which she speaks is how harshly she describes purgatory and yet how tender she describes God and how we must speak to him. That should blow your mind. In other words, in your prayer, you must speak to Jesus with absolute tenderness and know that he is even more tender, which is amazing. So we need to soften our hearts much more in our prayer when we speak to God. Now let's go through the rest of the quotes. On page 10, if you make the intention, God will accept whatever you do for all those souls in purgatory, just as if applied to one particular soul. In other words, you can offer your rosary for all the souls and he takes it as if for one. Awesome advice. Page 10 continues. Next to the mass, the way of the cross is the best prayer implied, the best prayer for the souls in purgatory. So in this, you know, it's because you're meditating on the sufferings of Jesus. Page 14, always walk in the presence of God. Tell him everything. Talk to him as you would talk to a friend. Guard your interior life carefully. Page 18, Jesus must be able to tell you all his sorrows, such as the world inflicts upon him daily. And on your part, you must give him the tender love that will console him. Now, I am a therapist and that's what I do. I listen to the sorrows of people and I console them. So it's like you're being invited to be a therapist to the God of the universe. He wants you to be a place where he can share his pain. I mean, that you have to understand how amazing that is. That's what God wants from you. He wants you to listen to him, to ask Jesus, Jesus, tell me your pain. That is just amazing. And he will in turn console you. It's just unbelievable. Page 20, you should practice perpetual adoration in your heart at all times, not only when you go to the chapel. You must also accustom yourself to make frequent spiritual communions. 
you will derive abundant and most salutary fruits from this, provided that you dispose yourself properly. So increase your spiritual communions, increase your practice of perpetual adoration in your heart. Page 22. It is true that His Majesty is frightening and that you are not worthy to have such an intimate converse with your Jesus. But is he not the master that enriches whomsoever he wills? So don't let your inadequacy be an excuse. Page 28, this is advice to one of the priests, and it's good things for us to think about. Tell him, the priest, to be sure in his retreats and missions to recommend strongly the offering up to God of the actions of the day. She mentions this in many places. So the the daily offering that many people arrive at heaven not having offered hardly anything and they arrive empty handed. The daily offering you must do and consecration to the Blessed Mother kind of includes this. Page 33. Thus, when you have a good thought or holy desire, they have been communicated to you by your guardian angel or by some saint and sometimes by God himself. That is the language of souls, good thoughts, and holy desires. Now you know the language of souls. Let's continue. Page 39. A mortified life is much more to be desired and is much safer. It is true that many of the saints had revelations and ecstasies, but they were a reward which God gave them after long combats and a life of self-abnegation, or else because he wished to use those servants of his for great things to procure his glory. That was done without any notice or fuss, in silence and prayer. And if they became known, the souls were covered with confusion and only spoke of their experiences under obedience. So if we pray and have mystical experience, silence is the key. Page 39 continued. Renouncing oneself from morning to night and being a living sacrifice and constantly putting aside the human self and allowing God to work in and with you as he pleases to receive the graces he sends you with profound humility, recognizing yourself quite unworthy of them, to live as constantly as possible in the divine presence, to perform all your actions under the eye of God, wanting him only to be the witness of your efforts and your only reward. This is the sanctity wished for and demanded by Jesus of all those who desire to be his only and to live his life. All the rest is pure illusion. That is difficult and we need lots of grace to live that out. Page 44. If I do things this way, I shall please so-and-so. I will do this to please such a person. God does not like these human reasonings in anyone, still less in you. Direct your intentions always with the sole desire of pleasing Jesus and him only. If by so acting you manage to please someone else, so much the better. And if the contrary happens, that cannot be helped. God will be pleased and that is all that ought to matter to you. Amazing. Who cares what other people think as long as it pleases Jesus? What a relief. Page 44 continued. Alas, how many lives seemed to be filled with good works and at death are found empty, what I was talking about earlier. This is because all those actions that appeared to be good, all those showy works, all that conduct that seemed irreproachable, all these were not done for Jesus alone. Some will have their eyes opened when they come here to this life in purgatory. Page 45. This is, this is an interesting one. I have told you there are some souls who do their purgatory at the foot of the altar. They are not there for faults they have committed in church because those faults which attack Jesus directly, Jesus present in the tabernacle, are punished with terrible severity and purgatory. One of my videos talks about this. The souls that are there in adoration, so there are souls doing their purgatory in adoration. I want to be one of those. Are there as a reward for their reverent behavior in the sacred presence of the Eucharist. They suffer less than, than if they were in purgatory itself, and Jesus, whom they contemplate with the eyes of their soul and of faith, softens their pains by his invisible presence. So be one of these people. Be one of these people that has a reverent behavior in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and you will get to spend your purgatory in adoration. I mean, 
that amazing page 48 you will never be able to understand well enough the goodness of god if people only took the trouble to think about it sometimes it would be enough to make them all saints but they do not sufficiently know the merciful goodness of the heart of Jesus in the world. Did you hear that? Each one measures it according to his way of thinking, and this way is wrong. So the way that we think of God is wrong. This is the reason why they pray badly. Yes, very few people, did you hear this? Very few people pray as Jesus wants them to pray. Listen, they are wanting in confidence, and yet Jesus only grants our prayers according to the ardor of our desires and the strength of our love. This is why the graces we often ask for remain ineffective. So if you ever wonder why Jesus doesn't hear your prayers, you need more desire and more love and more confidence in Jesus. You need to believe in his merciful goodness more. So first start your prayer by asking for these things. Page 50. Those who promote the recitation of the rosary everywhere deserve praise. It is this prayer that is the most efficacious in the present time of need. And this is in the 18, uh, 1840s or 1880s, something like that. Page 52. You do not direct your intention with the purity that God wills. For instance, instead of offering up your actions vaguely, you could do so with much more fruit if you only made your intentions more definite. When you take your meals, for example, say, O oh my Jesus, nourish my soul with your divine grace while I nourish my body. When you wash your face and hands, say, my Jesus, purify my soul as I am purifying my body, and so on. With each of your actions, accustom yourself to be always speaking heart to heart with Jesus, and let him be the mainspring of all you do or say, do you understand me? Do you understand this? Talk to Jesus all the time and with everything you do, talk to him about it. He cares for you. He wants you always to be thinking of him. He wants you to be obsessed with him, okay? Are you hearing this? This is like amazing news. Page 58, during my Thanksgiving after Holy Communion, the least infidelity on your part, a slight forgetfulness, the least indifference towards Jesus is very painful to him and hurts his heart far more than an injury from an enemy. Be very careful in examining yourself. Do not omit anything. Let Jesus be able to come with joy to rest in your heart so that you may be able to console him for all the griefs with which he is overwhelmed by the world. Page 64, the soul must advance on the narrow path, often so difficult to human nature. To attain the goal which Jesus has planned for you, you must become entirely dead to self and have no longer any will of your own, nor love of self. As yet you are not there. Thus, if someone accuses you wrongly and attributes to you motives you never had, you know what I am speaking of, you should not let it vex you. It is God who permits this to give you the opportunity to renounce yourself and cling only to him. He wishes you to arrive at that state where nothing whatsoever can disturb the peace of your soul. Sorrows, joys, disappointments, all should pass by unheeded. Listen well. God wishes to fulfill all your desires, to satiate your heart, to be your all in all. And believe me, this is not the work of a day. So she's saying that God is so much for you that you don't care what happens good or bad to you because you are just obsessed with God and so in love with him. If that is not beautiful, I don't know what is. Page 71 again. Tell him of all your tender love for him. And when you cannot go to church, speak to him in your heart. From time to time during the day, fill your mind for a few minutes with the divine presence. Recollect yourself before his majesty. Acknowledge in your own misery, but also his goodness and thank him affectionately. All the day long, you can speak to Jesus heart to heart. This is what he expects from you and what he has been waiting for so long. Do you hear the tenderness of Jesus? Do you hear it from a soul who's burning in purgatory? I mean, come on, what better witness of this? Page 72, permit Jesus to bend and mold you as he pleases. Listen attentively to his voice in the depth of your soul and do not lose one of his graces. Let your will be one with his adorable will and let your heart be lost in his. 
He will soon accomplish his design in you if you do not place any obstacles in his way. Do not lose sight of his divine presence. Page 72, my Jesus, I am ready to accomplish your will. What do you want me to do to please you today? That is how we should speak to him. Page 74, in order to fix your mind firmly on the presence of God, take each day one of the 14 stations of our Lord in his passion and dwell on it more particularly. My friends, this stuff is so good, so amazing. If you haven't checked out the first video about purgatory in general, check that out. Uh, the next one will be talking about some other details of the spiritual life, as well as some that speak about heaven, which she gives less details, and one interesting advice about parenting, which I thought was really amazing. Pray for me, please. Subscribe and support this channel with your prayers, with Buy Me a Coffee, with your love, and above all, go and love Jesus. Talk to him all day long. That will give me more joy than anything else you could do for me. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one.